If you have been following the channel for a while, you know we regularly cover standout animations from the latest award site of the day winners. But even with that, there are still quite a few websites I have bookmarked that haven't made it into videos yet. One of them was this site from back in September 2023, which earned a site of the day. Right on load, it featured this really clever landing page reveal animation that stood out. We have recreated a lot of entrance sequences before, but nothing quite like this one. As the intro kicks in, a set of cards animate into a circular layout, then they scale out one by one, but the first card stays behind and ends up launching a new set of cards outward, kind of like it's tossing them into place. I'll admit, I kept putting this one off for a while. It looked deceptively simple at first, but I figured it might be a bit tricky to rebuild. But last week, I finally sat down with it, and after a few hours, I managed to replicate the base animation concept using just vanilla JavaScript and GSAP. We have done plenty of text reveals and staggered entrance animations before, but this specific motion felt really fresh, especially the way the cards transition in and out. At first, I thought I'd use GSAP Flip to make the transitions work, but it actually came together just fine without it. In today's video, I'll walk you through how to build this entire landing page animation using HTML, CSS, a bit of JavaScript, and GSAP. If you find these kinds of rebels helpful, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get into the code. Let's start by setting up the basic HTML structure. At the top, I'm adding a simple navigation bar. This includes three sections. A logo on the left, a placeholder text block in the center, and a menu label on the right. For now, I'm just dropping in some dummy text, but you can replace these later with real navigation links or icons. In this video, we'll focus entirely on the animation, so the nav is just for the structure. Next, I'm creating a wrapper div with the class container. This is going to hold everything else inside the hero section. We are dividing the container into three key paths, an intro cards layer, an outro cards layer, and a hero footer. Before we start adding any cards, let me quickly walk you through how this layout works. The animation uses two different sets of cards. The first set, which we'll call the intro cards, includes eight images. These are the cards that animate into view first, arranged in a circular formation. Now, right after the animate in and just before the animate out, we'll render a second set of cards directly on top of them. The second set is called the outro cards and it contains five cards in total. These outro cards are stacked invisibly on top of the very first intro card, specifically the one positioned at the top center of the circle. We align them perfectly so it looks like nothing has changed visually. And because the first card in both sets uses the same image, it creates a seamless handoff and the viewer doesn't realize we have swapped the layers. Then we animate out all eight of the intro cards one by one. What's left behind is the neat stack of 5 outro cards and from there, we scatter them dynamically across the screen using GSAP. So let's start building it. First, I'm adding 8 divs with the class card inside this wrapper called intro cards. Each of these cards contains an image. These are just basic cover images. Next, I'm creating the outro card section. This one contains 5 divs, also using the class card. Inside each card, I'm adding a child div with the class card front and placing two paragraph tags inside it, just some dummy content for now. Now since we want the first outro card to look exactly like the first intro card, we need to add an extra layer inside that one. So for the first outro card, I'm adding another div with the class card back and placing the same image from the intro card inside it. That way, when it's stacked directly on top, the switch is completely invisible. That's all we need for the two card sets. Finally, we'll add the logo reveal at the bottom of the screen. Inside the hero footer, I'm adding a div with the class logo and placing a logo image inside it. This will scale up smoothly at the very end of the animation. And that's it for the HTML structure. With all the core layout in place, let's move on to the CSS and start styling everything. I've already imported Barlow condensed font from Google Fonts and we'll be using that as the main typeface across the layout. It gives everything a clean, slightly compressed look that fits the style we are going for. First, I'm starting with a global reset to remove default spacing from all elements and make sure sizing stays consistent. Then I'll apply the font to the whole page so we don't have to repeat it everywhere. For images, I'll make sure they fully cover their containers and maintain the respect ratio no matter what size they are in. 
This keeps everything visually balanced, especially during animation. Next, I'll style the navigation bar. It's fixed to the top of the screen and spans the full width. I'm adding padding around it and setting up a horizontal layout so the logo, title and menu button are spaced out evenly. The middle section is centered and the menu is aligned to the right. Right now, the entire nav is hidden off screen vertically. We'll slide it into view later when the animation starts. To keep the motion smooth, I'm optimizing it for performance and the text inside the nav is bold, all uppercase and slightly larger than the default size. Now I style the main section of the page. This container takes up the full screen height, has some padding on all sides and uses a soft green background color just to help everything stand out. I am also hiding any overflow so the animated elements don't leak outside the layout. Then I'll position two sets of cards, intro and outro. Both of these layers are stretched to cover the entire screen and they are set so that they won't block any mouse interactions. I'll absolutely position all the individual cards and place them right at the center of the screen for now. Each one has a fixed size and is prepped for smooth 3D transforms. They are also performance optimized so the animation doesn't stutter. For the outro cards, I want a little bit of variation in how they toss towards edges so I'm changing the pivot point on the second and third cards to flip more from the right side and the 4th and 5th cards will flip from the left. This gives the whole motion a bit more character when they fan out. Each card has a front and a back side. Both are stacked directly on top of each other and will only ever show one side at a time during the animation. The front side is styled to display two small blocks of text spaced apart. It has a light background, dark text, and is rotated just enough so we can flip it cleanly during the transition. The text is bold and legible at a medium size. Next, I'll move on to the footer section. This is placed at the bottom of the screen and centered horizontally. Inside it, we have a logo container that starts off extremely small. I have anchored its transform point to the bottom, so it expands upward when it animates in. The logo image inside it is also moved behind the mask, so that it can slide up smoothly when it appears. Before we move on, I'll also scale down all the cards to zero. That way, both sets of cards are fully hidden when the page loads and we can animate them in from nothing. Finally, I'll add a few adjustments for mobile. On smaller screens, the navigation gets slightly tighter spacing. The cards shrink down proportionally so they don't overwhelm the layout. I'm also reducing padding in the footer and adjusting the logo size so it still feels prominent on smaller devices. That wraps up all the styling. Next, we'll jump into the JavaScript and bring everything to life. Alright, we'll start by bringing in the animation library. So right at the top, I'm importing GSAP. This is the core library we'll use to build all of our animations. Next, I'm also importing the custom ease plugin from GSAP. This plugin lets us define our own easing curves instead of only using the built-in ones. That way, we can make the motion feel exactly how we want. Now we wait for the DOM to fully load so that everything on the screen is fully available before we run any animations. Then, I am registering custom ease that allows us to define a custom easing curve. I am calling this easing hop. It has a smooth, high power easing and will be using it across the animation to keep everything feeling smooth. Next, I am selecting all the intro cards from the page. These are the 8 cards we added earlier, the ones that are going to appear in a circular layout when the page loads. I will also grab the total number of these cards so we can space them evenly around a full circle. And now, to control how far out the cards are placed from the center. I have defined a radius. On smaller screens, I'll use a smaller radius so the circle fits comfortably within the viewport and on desktop, I'll bump up the radius so everything feels a bit more spacious. Then I'll loop through each of the intro cards. What we want to do here is calculate where around the circle each card should be placed. So for each card, I'm calculating an angle. This is what decides how far around the circle it sits. We take the index of the card and divide it by the total number of cards to get a percentage. 
then we multiply that by a full circle in radians which is 2 pi to convert it into an angular value. Finally, I shift the entire circle upwards slightly by subtracting half of pi so the very first card sits at the top instead of the right side. Once we have the angle, I'll calculate the x and y positions using basic trigonometry. To get the horizontal offset, I multiply the cosine of the angle by the radius and for the vertical offset, I multiply the sine of the angle by the same radius. This gives me the exact coordinates where each card should be placed around the circle. Now I'll apply those positions to each card so they are arranged in a perfect loop around the center. I'm also rotating each card so that it faces outward away from the middle. That way, no matter where it sits on the circle, the orientation always looks intentional and aligned. For now, I'm setting the scale of each card to zero. So they start fully hidden and can animate in from the center when we trigger the reveal. Now that we have positioned all the intro cards, we'll set up the second set, the outro cards. These are the five cards that get tossed around after the intro animation finishes. I'll start by selecting all the outro cards from the page and storing them into a list just like we did earlier for the intro cards. Now the goal here is to stack all of these outro cards right on top of the very first intro card. That way, when the intro cards animate out, we already have the outro stack ready to go and visually it feels like a smooth handoff. So first, I'm calculating the exact position of the first intro card, the one at the top of the circle. To do that, I'll repeat the same math we used earlier when laying out the cards. I'm plugging in the first index, which is 0, into the same angle formula. That gives me the topmost angle of the circle, which sits directly above the center. Then I'm using that angle to get the x and y coordinates, using the cosine for the horizontal offset and sine for the vertical one, multiplied by the radius like before. This gives me the exact position of that top card, which is where the entire outro stack will be placed. Now I loop through each of the outro cards and position them all in that same spot. So they all start stacked, one on top of the other, right where the first intro card is. Each card is also rotated outward, just like before, using the same rotation angle as that top intro card. This keeps them perfectly aligned for the initial view. Then I'll handle the flip setup. I want the first card in this stack to appear normally, so it starts unflipped but the rest of the cards will be rotated horizontally so they are hidden from the view until we animate them later. This is what sets up the flip effect for the card toss. I am also assigning a decreasing z-index to each card in this deck. The first card is on top and the rest are layered beneath it. This ensures that when we scatter them, they animate in the right visual order. And finally, I am making them all fully transparent for now. We will reveal them at the right moment during the timeline. Now I will set up the main animation timeline. I am creating a new timeline with a short delay so everything has a moment before it begins. The first thing I'll do is bring in the intro cards. They start scaled down to nothing and here I am animating them up to full size. Each card comes in one after the other using a small stagger which gives us that nice circular reveal instead of all of them appearing at once. Once that sequence completes, I'll right away set up the outro stack. At this point, I'll make all the outro cards visible, then I'll scale the first card up to full size and reset its rotation so it's sitting flat at the top. The rest of the cards I'll keep very small and rotated in different directions, one tilted to the left, one tilted to the right, and a couple rotated further out. The staging makes it look like the cards are being fanned out, ready to toss into place during the next part of the animation. It gives this tag a bit of that scattered, playful look when we actually move them across the screen. Next, I'll scale all of the intro cards back down. This is the part where they fade out on the scene, clearing the way for the outro stack. Again, I'm staggering the exit so each card shrinks one after the other instead of all at once. That way, the transition feels more dynamic. As soon as those are gone, I'll shift the outro stack downward slightly. On mobile, they'll stay closer to the center and on larger screens, they'll move a little less lower. This keeps the layout balanced no matter what device we are on. At the same time, I'll flip the very first outro card. It rotates horizontally to reveal its front face while the rest of the stack is still waiting in place. That flip acts as a signal that the second half of the animation is beginning, leading us into the toss sequence. Now, I'll animate the outro cards into their final positions. Up until now, they've all been stacked on top of each other near the center. Here, I'll spread them out horizontally across the screen so they look like they are being tossed into place. To figure out exactly where each card should land, I'm calculating a set of positions dynamically. First, I grab the width of the viewport so I know how much space I have to work with. Then I measure the width of a card and add a bit of padding so the cards don't touch very edges of the screen. From there, I calculate the maximum position on the left and the maximum on the right. 
and then I also divide those values by 2 to get the middle points. That gives me a nice range of 5 positions, far left, left center, middle, right center and far right. I assign each outer card to one of those slots based on its index. While I'm placing them, I'm also scaling them up to full size and resetting their rotation so they are upright again. This makes it feel like the guards are fanning out smoothly into their final arrangement. And the whole thing runs with that custom hop easing, so the movement feels a little springy and natural rather than stiff. At the same time this is happening, I'll also animate the navigation bar into view. It was hidden off the top of the screen at the start and now it slides down into place. This lines up perfectly with the auto card spreading out so the whole composition feels like it arrives together. Now I'll set up a separate timeline just for the hero footer. I'm giving it the same delay so it starts together with the main card sequence. The first thing I'll animate here is the logo image inside the footer. It begins shifted down hidden below the container and I'll slide it upward into place. This creates a smooth reveal as it enters the screen. Then, once that animation is played, I'll scale the entire logo wrapper up to its full size. It starts very small at the top and this scaling makes it grow into position as the final element of the sequence. I'm also giving this step a little extra delay so it lines up perfectly with the rest of the card's animation. With that, the footer logo completes the animation and the whole landing sequence is wrapped up. Finally, I'll add a function to handle window resizing. This is important because the outer guards are positioned dynamically based on the width of the screen and we want them to stay evenly spaced even if the viewport size changes. Inside the function, I start by checking the current width of the window. Then I measure the width of one of the cards and add a bit of padding so the cards don't stick right to the edges. With that information, I calculate the maximum distance each card can move on the left and the right and then I also figure out the halfway points in between that again gives me 5 neat positions across the screen. Far left, left center, middle, right center and far right. Next, I'll again loop through each of the outer guards and update their horizontal position according to this new layout. This makes sure that no matter how wide or narrow the screen is, the cards always fan out evenly. And finally, I'll attach this function to the window resize event so every time the browser is resized, the positions of the cards are recalculated automatically. With that, our animation is fully responsive and complete. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.